precious friends, precious family, how are you doing today? God loves you. Jesus loves you. I love you. I thank and praise God for this wonderful opportunity to share God's word with you even today. Our God is a good God. In the book of 1 John chapter 3 verse 1 we read like this. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. Upon whom? The children of God. Upon whom? The true Christians. It is talking about the status of a true Christian. What manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God, the daughters of God. Therefore the world knoweth not because it knows God not. You got it? The world doesn't know God. That is the reason they do not know us as well because we are the children of God. As a true Christian, you are a son of God. You are a daughter of God. That is what God claims and that is what God says. That is the truth, my brother. In the book of John, chapter 8, verse 32, we read like this. You will know the truth. The truth will set you free. You got it? It is our ignorance which keeps us bound, which keeps us in darkness, which keeps us in pain, sorrows. Yes, it is our ignorance. When you come to know the truth, the truth will set you free. My brother, my sister, my friend, in case, in case, if you too want to be a daughter of God or a son of God, listen to this message very carefully. I will share the secrets with you. God is a good God. God is impartial. God loves everyone the same way. But many a times, we are ignorant of the truth. In the book of John, chapter 1, verse 12, God gives the key. But as many as received him, as many has received Jesus, to them he gave power to become the sons of God. Who? God gave the power to become the sons of God, the daughters of God, even to them that believe on his name. If you believe in Jesus' name and if you receive him as your Lord and Savior, you can become son of God or daughter of God. You got it? That is the key. That's the key. In the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 20, we read like this. Behold, I, Jesus says, I stand at the door and knock. If any man, he says, if any man hear my voice. That's what I'm doing now. That's what you are listening now. God is knocking at the, the heart door. God is talking to you now. Behold, I, Jesus says, stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and I will sup with him and he will sup with me. You got it? God says that he will dine with you. He didn't stop there. He said that he will come in and dine with you in your heart. And then he says that he will dine with me. She will dine with me as well. Jesus says that. What does it mean? You will be invited to his home, to his house, to his place, to dine with him. That is nothing but heaven, my brother. You got it? It is an open invitation to all mankind. You got it? This is how we can become sons and daughters of God. In the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 9, he gives the salvation key. If you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in your heart that God raised him, from the dead you shall be saved you got it it is so simple it is so simple just believe in your heart that god raised jesus from the dead and confess with your mouth that jesus is your lord that's it that will make you saved and you will be ever living you got it my brother my sister my friend god is real god loves us so much see if you don't see god now we don't see him, but people see us. The day will come once we are dead and gone, the people may not see us, but God will see us, we will see God. You got it? That is how it works. You got no man has ever seen God in physical form. Nobody has seen him yet. The day we depart from earth, in case if you have accepted Lord Jesus as your Savior and Lord, you too can see God. You can. You too can reach the presence of God. That is what we read in the book of 
2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 8. You got it? My brother, in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, from 16 to 18, God says like this, What agreement has the temple of God with idols? God is calling us as his temple and he says that what agreement we have with the idols we should not be worshiping idols we should get rid of idols that's what God says for all of you are the temple of the living God as God has said I will dwell in them I will walk in them I will be their God and they, they shall be my people you see once you have accepted Lord Jesus God makes us his own temple he will begin to live in us he will begin to walk in us and he will be with us where in our hearts our heart is nothing but the temple of God it becomes the temple of God the moment you choose Jesus as your Lord and Savior that opens the door for God to come into your heart that is how we receive peace we receive joy we receive hope we come out of all the darkness when God walks into our heart. You got it? My brother, my sister, my friend. And God continues to say this. Wherefore, come out from among them. He says that come out from among them. From among whom? From the worldly, ungodly people. He says that come out of them and be all of you separate. He says that separate yourself from the worldly people. You got it? And then he continues to say, says the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. Whatever is unclean, touch not. You know what it is. You know what it is. Every unjust, every sinful, evil nature and things don't even touch. God says that come out of them, separate yourself from them and touch not the unclean things. And God says, I will receive you. And I will be your father unto you. And all of you shall be my sons and my daughters, says God Almighty. You say, can God lie? God says that. When we accept Lord Jesus as our Savior, and when we choose to live a holy life following the Holy Bible, God says that he will become our own father. He says that he will make us his own son, his own daughter. What a wonderful, amazing privilege that would be. That is the truth. That is the status of a true Christian. And in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 38, God says like this, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins. And all of you shall receive the Holy Spirit. You got it? He says that you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit when? When you repent and take immersion baptism so that your sins will be remitted. You will receive the remission of sins and then you will receive the, the gift of Holy Spirit as well. My brother, my sister, my friend, you might say that when you were an infant, you have been baptized. Think about it. Can an infant, can a child repent? Can it ask for forgiveness of sins? Children are sinless. There's no need for remission of sins to children. And the children cannot repent. So in case, if you think like that, that you have been baptized already, my brother, my sister, my friend, that is invalid. That is invalid. You need to be baptized. The true baptism is this. You need to repent. And you need to ask for God's forgiveness. And you need to take immersion baptism in the name of Jesus Christ. Then God promises that he will give us the gift of the Holy Spirit. And then in the book of John, chapter 20, verse 17, we read this wonderful thing. Jesus, after his resurrection, Mary comes and meets Jesus. She found Jesus in front of the tomb. The moment she recognized Jesus, she wanted to touch him. Probably she might have ran towards him to hug him. Jesus says like this, Jesus says to her, to Mary, touch me not, 
for I am not yet ascended to my father. But I go, but go to my brethren. He is telling, go to my brethren, in, which are the disciples of Jesus. To us, he is telling, go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend to my father and your father, and to my God and your God. You see how clearly he says that. He addresses God as my father and your father, and my God and your God. You got it? Jesus is the only begotten son of God. And we are children of God. So Jesus becomes our elder brother. You got it? And that, that, that's the reason he addresses us like this. He says that my father and your father, my God and your God. You got it? My brother, my sister, my friend, you do want to be a son of God, a daughter of God. Then you must accept this Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Then you must take immersion baptism. You must receive the Holy Spirit. You must follow Bible. You must live a holy life. You must live a fruit-bearing life. My brother, my sister, my friend, this is the status of a true Christian. Our real life begins when we die on this earth. You got it? Death is not the end of our existence, but transition into eternity, into eternal life. Heaven and earth, we are living in now, we are seeing all these things, will be destroyed one day. That's what God says. And God says that we will be received in eternity, in heaven, if we choose to follow this Jesus now. My brother, life on earth is like a bride who is getting prepared to meet the bridegroom as if we are in the chamber of decoration we are decorating ourselves we are all like brides decorating ourselves to see the bridegroom once we are out of this world in death we will meet the groom you got it this is a place of preparation earthly life is a place of preparation my brother my sister my friend stop taking your eternal life in heaven for granted. Stop doing that. God loves you. Jesus loves you. I love you. I now told you the secret of how you too can become a son of God, a daughter of God. It is an open call. I told all the secrets to you. My brother, my sister, my friend, watch this video again. Go through the Bible locations I gave you so that you will know for yourself this is the truth and this will set you free. God loves you. Jesus loves you. I love you. Until we meet again, may God be with you all. Amen. Hallelujah.